On part three of today's wilderness adventure, you're going to see the results of the increment bore testing samples we took of those western red cedars. We were absolutely shocked. I hope you enjoy these two videos. So how old are these western red cedars? You're about to find out. I have to say, if these trees taught me anything, it would be, never lose your sense of wonder. If you see something you don't understand, be curious. Here you can see the difference in two different types of trees that are the exact same age. One grew incredibly fast. Surprising, not only us, but Paul as well. Here you can see Paul using the increment bore, and he's about to extract the core needed to confirm the exact age of this tree. Well, maybe not the exact age, because you're taking the measurement about breast height. All the research I found said the measurement should be taken, or the samples should be taken, between 4 and 5 feet up off the ground about breast height of your average person. For me, that'd probably be about four and a half feet. Time will tell. So I think this is a, a much younger one than the one up there, but maybe they're about the same age and they screw differently. Yep. It grew very fast. It grew very, very quickly. Look, there's the center of the tree. Okay, so we went past the center. That's the center. Okay. okay. Yeah. See where the rings start going in the opposite direction? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. And you can see here, where this was a circle. So yeah. that would have been the center of the tree. That's the core. So you count each ring. Yeah. Each re ring represents one year because winter, winter rings are slower growing than summer growth yep. which makes the winter rings are, are denser so the darker each ones, year like, eh? yep, each yep. year and it don't look like it slowed down anywhere huh? right yeah it's got a very consistent very good growth so that there only looks like it's uh, about 25 years old right 25 years old so we know exactly how this tree got here one two three four Twenty-five to here, plus another. It could be another ten there, right? Okay. At the most. And why he added the extra ten years from uh, where he took the core sample? It's because we don't know how that tree struggled when it first started growing or was first transplanted here, right? It could have taken a, a, a few years for it to really kick in and start to grow. So and, thirty-five years old. And see the rings here. You can also age a tree like. This was one year growth from here. Uh, every whorl on a tree. Yes. From world to world is a year. And you can see it got from you know, here to here. Right? Yeah. And then to way up there. And you could see them, the different whorls. So it grew very fast, uh, like an altar, uh, just a separate one by itself. But every time you get a look up there, you can yeah. see different sections of branches. Okay, yep. Yeah, that's a whorl. Perfect. So well, we can get an age on the other one if you Yeah, I would really love to get the age on the other one. But first, check out what I learned. So I, I just learned something that I never knew before. I taught this entire tree, if it was a still alive tree, uh, it was alive all the way through, the entire tree. But this, this green layer, the green outer layer, if you can see it, that is called a cambium, cambium cambium, layer, and that is the only living part of a tree. So when you peel off the birch bark and, and you cut into the cambium, cambium, cambium. cambium layer, you are essentially killing that tree. So be very, very careful. Once you see the white, the wood. 
it would. Too far. Like once you're to there, yeah. If you went all the way around the tree, it would kill the tree, right? That's the supporting layer of the tree, the the stem. Uh, there's no living material in it. It's just uh, cellulose is what it's called. It just supports the tree. The only living part is the thin thinness of your skin around the tree, uh, underneath the bark. Okay, you can sometimes you can have bark very thick, right? But that cambium layer underneath is still very thin. And uh, the bark is protects that cambium layer. That's why it's there. I just learned something new. You're never too old to learn. And, and that I thought this entire tree was alive from one side to the other, all the way through the diameter. Is that all right? I always did. I didn't realize okay. the life of a tree is just in the cambium layer. Okay. Yeah. Well. Wow. Okay, so if you're going to prune a tree... Well, want... Charlie, yeah, if, if you're going to prune a tree, branches off a tree, the proper way of doing it is look for a collar on the tree, like to see the extra swelling before, before the branch. Yep. Cut right in, don't cut out here. Cut right into this. Don't disturb the collar, but cut, you know, within a centimeter, say, of this thicker stuff. And that enables this collar then uh, to grow over the wound that you've made in the tree. If you cut uh, up here, that will not heal over because this collar is back here and it would take like 10 years for the, the tree to grow in diameter to reach that cut you made. And by that time, uh, you'll have rot in your tree or insect problem or disease, whatever uh, you you got to cut right here for it to grow over. And that branch is infected. Okay, it's so... Prone, prone to blow down, right? You can see where this one was cut off at the collar. And when you do it right, that will eventually turn into this. It just grows over and heals itself. Yep. That's how you prune your trees. Don't cut them off way out here. Cut them off at the collar. And this branch is infected with the white pine blister. Rust. Rust. Yeah. Killing the tree. Yeah. Kill the branch first. So if it's not found and, and, and gotten rid of as quickly as possible, yeah. it kills our white pines. Yeah, there is no cure. You can see it in the yep. year following. So yep. it would be the year before yep. that you would say, oh, there was a fire during this year. Yep. Or, well, okay, so the mystery is a mystery no more. We know the age of this tree is between 35 and 40 years. And we know that the last or the previous dis district manager of the forestry in St. George's, George Kitchen, was probably the guy responsible for planting these trees here. He would go around to areas where there was old pits and stuff like that there. And they, like a pit is a pit that'll last forever. So he wanted to try and bring it back to nature. And he would do so by planting various types of trees just to see how well they would do. So in all likelihood, this was uh, planted here by George Kitchen, the previous uh, district manager of the St. George's um, forestry department. No longer a mystery. Very good. So you don't have to go very far, you know, on a birch to get to that cad cadian layer. Yep. So if you go peeling bark off, like off the birch, uh, if you go, if you go to that layer, you will kill the tree. And if there's still bark like that under it, you're okay. Uh, sometimes you get the the, the brown the big yeah, yeah. chunks you can haul off and it will kill the trees.